Hey, Miss Tomato. It's Lauren. Um, I hope you have a really nice holidays. But um, I will not be attending school tomorrow because my family has decided that we're going to take an extra day vacation. But this is my presentation. I'm going to read it and I'm going to show you after. And you can always look at it in Google Classroom if you really want to see. Just so it's easier so it's not like backward for you. So my bottle was the Battle of Jetland. It continued from May 31st to June 1st in 1916. Um, for my word bank, I said that you need to know what vessels are, which they are shipped or boats, and the fleet is a country's navy. That is the front. I don't know if you can see that because it's inverted, so it looks really weird. Um, here I have some facts. I said the Battle of Jutland took place on water in the Northern Sea. The battle was between the British and the Germans. The war started on May 31st, 1916, and ended on June 1st, 1916. Around 8,500 lives were lost, and around 25 boats were lost at sea. So those were some of my facts that I picked up on my sources. I can't really see it that well, but... Um, here are, like, some more facts. Well, more informational facts. This war was different than others because it was fought on the Northern Sea. And different tactics were used, such as shrapnel shells, shrapnel shells, sorry. <laughs> shrapnel shells were a bullet that when fired could kill an individual target. So they're very accurate. And yeah, they were just a new, different type of bullet that could like pin anybody and shoot them with one bullet and kill them. So another tactic used was battle cruisers. Battle cruisers were similar to a normal ship, except for the fact that they were more balanced and built differently than common ships. So they were built a little bit more sturdier. They were balanced out like through the build of the boat so they could be more supported and they wouldn't sink as fast. And then the pictures, that is um, a picture of the bullet and that is a picture of a battle cruiser that was used. And this slide explains who won the war. So there was no official winner, but the Germans were outgunned by the British and returned home. And although there wasn't really like an official winner, the British and the Germans both took it as a win. So since there wasn't like a real winner, we never really figured out who really won. <laughs> Um, the win that the British earned helped them in the long run. They actually gained a blockade, which helped them defeat the German again in 1918. And the Germans thought that they won because they claimed more vessels. Which, again, if we go back to the first slide, means ships or boats. Um, and then my last slide, well, my last informational slide, was my additional facts, just like about the war. Um, at the time, Germany and Britain were the most powerful fleets in the world. And, like, that's, that's a pretty, like, that's up there. That's a pretty, like, big title, if you ask me. Um, the Germans' gunfire was extremely accurate. So the Germans were the ones who had the, um, shrapnel shells. And they could, like, hit anybody on target if they wanted to. Because they were just so accurate that, like, any target, boom, they could kill them in one shot. They didn't have to reload that fast either because they were so accurate that, like, if anybody, if with the right aiming and the right person, they'd be gone. Like, you didn't really have a chance of living. Um, and then my last additional fact was the conditions of the Northern Sea were awful. They impacted the war because it was hard to stay afloat while fighting. So the Northern Sea, as we know, lasted from May 31st to June 1st. That isn't, like, that long. That's only a few months. But in those months, you could expect that there are going to be, like, some incidences that would happen. With weather, with maybe some ships that broke down. With maybe, like, a grenade or something hit one of the boats and it exploded. Like, and you have to think, they were at sea. So they didn't have all the materials that they would, like, on land. So it was very hard for them to, um to just battle, get through that, and it was more difficult than it could have been um, if they were on land. And the weather really impacted them. If there was a storm, that could have, like, made it awful for them to survive in. And the ships could have broken. Like, if there was thundering and lightning, somebody could have gotten zapped. Somebody got could have gotten struck by lightning. Like, you never know. We don't really know, because... 
we weren't really in that time, like none of us here really fought, but we can expect that some of the weather like really impacted them. Just like the concept of the environment that they had to go through. They couldn't go back to land to get more supplies. Well, actually, they could have, but they most likely didn't because they were obviously at war. And if they were trying to retreat back to their home base, they could have, you know, hit more, like, economical um, things that could have impacted the ship, like, or the people. And at sea, you could get seasick. Like, I know that personally, my dad, he gets very seasick. Not if he's driving the boat, but if he's on the side of it. And that could have, like, impacted some of your soldiers, and they could have gotten sick. Or if they already were sick, that could have made it even worse. So, yeah. Oh, I accidentally skipped a slide. <laughs> um, so this is why it was the war fought. And here, I have stick people, and those were the people, which you'll see. Um, the Jutland War was fought because the Germans wanted to kill and weaken the Royal Navy. Reinhard Scheer was on the Germany side. His plan was to destroy David Beatty's the battle cruiser before John Jellygo arrived. John was commander of the Grand Fleet. And here is a picture of all the people that were really important in that, pretty much. And yeah, so that is the end of my slide. And the last slide is just my sources that are cited. There's four. Some of them have multiple links, but yeah. So I hope you have a happy holidays, and I hope you liked my presentation. See you, Miss Amato. See you in a few weeks. <laughs> Bye.